Hello, I'm Chris Menard. I have a great video for you today and I'm really excited about this because I made this video three years ago and even though the video is still correct, it's time to do an update. So we are going to do a mail merge using Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and Outlook. I want to send out personalized email messages. I'm going to try to get right to the point on this video, but I'm going to give you a few tips while you're going through here based on questions I've been asked the last three years about mail merge. So here we go. I have Excel running. This is where people usually have their list of that they want to send out. And by the way, it's not always an email mail merge. It could be letters. It could be labels. But for this email mail merge, I know this sounds silly. Make sure you have an email for people. The second item is I have a total of seven fields in the first row. They're in bold. I have seen where people go to Word, where the email mail merge actually happens, and fields are missing. That is usually because in Excel, sometimes named ranges happen. So make a copy of your data before you do it. So if something's not working, make a copy of your data. Go to the Formulas tab, hit the Name Manager, if you see any named ranges, click it and select delete. I actually had one in this example that I had to delete because title was not showing up in Word for me. Close. Also make sure your header row is the first row. I'm going to save this Excel file. It's good to go. I don't have to use all the fields when I do the mail merge. There's no need to hide them. There's no need to delete them. Close the Excel file and go to Word. I'm going to create a new document. Perfect. There I go. All mail merges happen in Word and they happen on the mailings tab at the top. I just went there. Third item over says start mail merge. There are the different mail merges you can do in Word. We're focused on email messages. Click it once. It's going to want me to go find my Excel file. It did change the page formatting a little bit so it looks like the body of an email even though you still see the ribbon at the top. Select recipients. You want to use an existing list because it's an Excel file. I'm going to pop up that Excel file I just had. If you had multiple worksheets, you would see multiple names here, but I only had one worksheet called main. I don't think I pointed that out, but I did. But look right here, the first row of data contains the column heading, so it's got to be your first row. Click OK. Not required but highly recommend is you go to Edit Recipient List. I hope I see those three people, and I do. Also hope that I don't see any blank rows. If you did have blanks down here where I'm slowly moving my mouse, you could come in here and just uncheck them, but I'm, I'm perfect right here. Just so you know, this is a minor tip. Sometimes the way your fields are set up in Excel is not always the way your fields show up in Word here because title was the first in Excel, but it's one, two, the third here. But I've got them all. Another tip. Another reason I like to go to Edit Recipient List is sometimes I like to sort these, especially when I'm doing letters. But I'm going to even do it for an email mail merge. I'm going to sort by the last name. And if you're saying, Chris, why would you care about that for an email mail merge? Let's say I've got 200 emails that are going to be personalized and sent out. And if my Wi-Fi connection cuts out in the middle of that mail merge and Outlook stops working, I can at least go to my sent folder and see who got an email. So there's that tip. I'm going to hit OK. And now you type the body of the email. So I'm going to do the word dear. This is totally up to you, but it is insert merge field. There are my seven fields from Microsoft Excel. Another tip, you don't have to use them all. I believe I've said that once, but I want to, I'm not going to use first name. Dear title, space bar, last name, comma or colon is up to you depending on the formality of it. I'm going to just make this up right here and I'm not going to use all the fields. I want to put in their company name 
has been a client for X number of years, years as a client, I'm not going to quit typing. We appreciate your business on and on and on. You could have put in their job title. There's no reason to put in their work email, but again, you've got to have their email to do this. <clears throat> so actually, that's actually one field you should probably not put in here, their email, unless you're asking them to verify their email, but that would be a silly thing to do. Not required, but again, highly recommend to always go to preview results. If I had 200 of these, I would at least look through a few. So there's one for Nancy Drew, ABC, Menard, XYZ, Vandalay Industries. So all three worked. I only had three, but I would check a few of them. Once you know you've got them working, here you go. Finish and merge. Watch this. I'm going to pop up my Microsoft Outlook. <clears throat> I'm already in my sent folder. I want to point, this was intentional. I deleted all the emails for today. So I have no emails sent today. Here we go. Back to Word. Finish and merge. Send email messages. If you notice though, it doesn't know who to send the email to yet. So when this box appears in the two, you go find the email you want to use. And for me, it was work email. That is the field. Everyone gets the same subject line. Here's a question I get. Can you personalize the subject line for each person? No, you can only personalize the body of the email. I'm going to just call this thank you or thanking them for being a customer, whatever. Send them all, send the current, send a, send a range, I'm going to send them all. So I'm done with Word. Outlook's easy. Outlook just sends them. I recommend you have Outlook running. I'm going to hit OK. Watch this. It's going through the emails and sending them. I usually don't close this yet. I pop over into Outlook. One email sent, two, three. I'm just giving you a quick preview. There they are. Looking good. The other question I get is, can you send each one a different attachment? Not by default, the way it works, there are third-party add-ins that will allow you to do that. I'm not doing that in this video, but no to that, sending them different attachments. Anyway, there is your email mail merge. Please let me know if you have any questions at all. Put them in the comments down below. I hope this was helpful. Feel free to subscribe. Thank you for your time. Have a wonderful day.